number of green cell structures called chloroplasts. Looking more closely at a single chloroplast reveals that each of these organelles contains a protein-rich fluid called the stroma. The stroma contains enzymes necessary for the chemical reactions that take place during photosynthesis. It is here that glucose is manufactured. Inside this fluid are structures called grana, which look like stacks of pancakes. Each granum consists of disc-like thylakoids. A thylakoid is formed of membranes that enclose a compartment called a lumen. A still closer view shows that a green pigment called chlorophyll is embedded in the membranes of a thylakoid. Chlorophyll gives plants their green color and is responsible for capturing the energy of sunlight. Understanding the role of chlorophyll in photosynthesis requires understanding some things about the nature of sunlight. The white light in sunlight is actually a mixture of different wavelengths that make up the visible spectrum. If you pass sunlight through a prism, these wavelengths are separated. Red light has the longest wavelength and the least energy, while violet has the shortest wavelength and the most energy. The different wavelengths of visible light interact with chlorophyll. Chlorophyll absorbs the violet, blue, and red areas of the spectrum. It transforms their energy into the chemical energy in glucose. However, it reflects the middle areas of the spectrum, the green-yellow part. Because it reflects green wavelengths to our eyes, we see chlorophyll and the plant parts that contain this pigment as green. Many plants contain other pigments besides chlorophyll, including yellow pigments called carotenoids and red pigments called anthocyanins. In most plants, these pigments are masked by chlorophyll. In autumn, however, some plants no longer produce chlorophyll and these other pigments become visible in the brilliant red and yellow foliage that is famous for this time of year. The chemical reactions of photosynthesis that take place inside chloroplasts occur in two stages, the light reactions and the dark reactions. The light reactions get their name because they require light and take place only during daylight while the dark reactions can occur at any time, day or night. The dark reactions are also called the light-independent reactions. The light reactions occur first. When light hits chlorophyll molecules, it excites electrons in these molecules and raises them to a higher energy level. The electrons are then involved in a series of reactions in which they give up energy. These reactions set up conditions that cause molecules of a substance called adenosine diphosphate, or ADP, to be converted into higher energy molecules of adenosine triphosphate, ATP. While this is happening, the energy of sunlight also leads to the splitting of water molecules. Oxygen is formed. The oxygen is released into the atmosphere. Hydrogen ions also result from the splitting of water. Another molecule is formed when electrons are transferred to a substance called NADP. This allows NADP to bind to a hydrogen ion. The resulting product, NADPH, is another high energy molecule. Together, the ATP and NADPH that are produced in the light reactions provide the energy for the dark or light-independent reactions. The dark reactions involve a series of chemical reactions called the Calvin cycle. Carbon dioxide from the atmosphere enters the Calvin cycle and reacts with a compound called ribulose bisphosphate, or RUBP. RUBP contains five carbon atoms. The addition of a carbon molecule from carbon dioxide creates an unstable six-carbon molecule. This splits in two, 
forming two three-carbon molecules. This is where the ATP and NADPH that were formed during the light reactions come in. The ATP gives up its energy, becoming ADP. Likewise, the NADPH gives up its energy to become NADP. The energy from ATP and NADPH is used to drive reactions that change the three carbon molecules, converting them into higher energy molecules of phosphoglyceraldehyde, or PGAL. In several turns of the Calvin cycle, some of the PGAL leaves the cycle to form glucose and other molecules. The rest of the PGAL